you can't like die from drinking too much boba tea, can you? I really hope not. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and today we are going to try to make our opponents miserable. We are going to stax them out. We are going to be blowing up lands, we are going to be shutting off every creature ability and making it so all creatures are 1-1s, one -ones, and hopefully we'll put some wins on the scoreboard. Now, uh, maybe a year ago I played Sean's deck list and piloted it to I think a 4-1 finish. So we're going to see the 2024 version of this and see how it fares. This, this is just good, honest magic with Armageddon and Crucible of Worlds. So we can blow up all the lands and then bring our lands back. Uh, the first thing that I want to notice you to notice here is the very large land count of this deck list. Uh, if we kind of throw Mox Diamond into the land category here, 31 of the cards in this deck are essentially, like, just lands, just our mana sources. Um, this, is, this is a removal spell in a trench coat, don't, don't get confused. What's really neat about the tabernacle in decks like this one is when you literally blow up every land, tabernacle just destroys anything that is not indestructible. And there's not very many literally indestructible things running around Legacy. It's like Merit Lage tokens, and that's about it. So we are essentially a colorless, splash white deck. And the colorless stuff you're used to seeing is all the nonsense that you tend to see in ancient tomb shells. But the white stuff is a special sort of nonsense. Humility turns all creatures into just one ones. No abilities. Base power and toughness, 1-1. One, one. And we can do some very cute things if this happens. Uh, one of the cutest being Caltrops. Whenever a creature attacks, Caltrops deals 1 damage to it. In other words, whenever a creature attacks, it fucking dies. And that's pretty cool. We are going to have a decent way to kind of prevent attacks from most of the creatures in the format in the form of Moat. So our general idea is make our opponents miserable by just completely denying their ability to play the game and invalidate the things that they do manage to get into play. Now, Karn the Great Creator is not a card that I'm really in love with, and in fact I don't really like it, but its ability to fetch Ensnaring Bridge gives you a lot of options for locking out these creatures. You Humility them, you Moat them, you Ensnaring Bridge them, or, in some cases, you can get even cheekier and do something like Smokestack to start obliterating all of the permanents. And as your opponent starts getting fewer and fewer lands, cards like Tabernacle are going to get stronger and stronger. Now, a, a general word of advice. Generally speaking, decks like this don't work in Legacy anymore. This is not a deck that is trying very hard to win the game. This is a deck that is trying to stop your opponent from winning the game. And that means that the average turn counter for a deck like this one is going to be very high. So your opponent is going to have find to to oh, sorry, your opponent is going to have time to find their outs to your lock pieces. So for example, many decks will run a Boseju, and that is something that can generically get rid of these artifacts and enchantments or there might be a Brazen Borrower floating around. So, you need to stack up a lot of these lock pieces to make it so that your opponent can't actually get out. And we do have some very cute things that we can do. You know, we can blow up all lands and then use flagstones to get one of our lands back. We can legend rule our flagstones and replay them via Crucible of Worlds. You know, we have some solid options here. Last time I managed to 4-1 with this, Legacy's gotten a little more powerful in the last year. We'll kind of see how this goes. We do have some neat silver bullets in the sideboard, things that can help us... Sorry, let me drag that over here for a second. Things that can help us go and fight against the initiative are possible, as are some sort of weirdos like Karn's Silex. It enters the battlefield tapped. Players can't, 
Players can't pay life to cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities, so goodbye cards like Force of Will. And it can also be kind of your pernicious deed. It can destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X or less. So we have some powerful tutorable artifacts. Um, I think Voidmere is sus. I don't think this card is really playable in any format. The idea here is that this is protection for your cards that matter. Um, this can help against grief. This can help against force of will, help against force of negation, daze, all that sort of stuff. Um, I imagine that I'm going to sideboard this out very frequently. Um, I would love to be wrong, but I, I think this is a net negative for our deck. This is a player, so this does also count me. So, you know, that's the thing. So why don't we go ahead and jump into the league here. If you find that you need some cards, check out toamagic.com and use promo code THRABENU. Let them know that I sent you and save a little bit on your order. You're tired of getting all your orders from a billion different vendors. Just order from TOA. They tend to have a massive stock of Eternal Staples. And they also got like 95% of standard stuff in stock at any given time. With that being said, let's battle. I mean, like, okay, so maybe it's not like a battle. Maybe it's more like a, a war of attrition. Let's war. Okay, my first hand is 100% a keep, and I have to figure out what the fuck I'm doing with the hand. I think it is turn one chalice, turn two trinosphere. I think that's my plan. I was planning on discarding the wasteland, and now I'm second guessing myself. It, like, playing City of Traders on turn two is very awkward. Assuming that I want to continue to develop my land drops. Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot here. I think I would like to Trinisphere my opponent and then potentially wasteland them afterwards. I'm gonna I guess I don't really need an upkeep stop this league. I ain't casting shit on my opponent's turn. I am a sorcery speed boy this league. So the hope here is that my opponent is not just like a moon stompy deck. That is just going to hit me in the face with a bunch of goblins. Because I will just lose to a bunch of 1-1 one, one goblins. Uh, initiative, it looks like. Uh, my chalices and trade spheres aren't great here. My humility is actively good. My chalice uh, probably does nothing. And historically, initiative tends to bully the sort of deck that I am playing. Because I don't have many ways to take the initiative. And this is why we have, what is it, Sarevox Tome? What is that card card? Yeah. This is why we have Sorry Vox Tome as a way to take the initiative in the sideboard. Um, well, that's not attacking immediately. That's the good news. Absolutely don't want you. Um, this fucks up my crucibles. I think my best chance of winning this game is sticking my opponent on a low amount of mana. This is not a good play for me. I need to get to four mana for humility. But since I kept the Wasteland in hopes of Wastelanding my opponent, I am now a little bit further away from this humility. I would love for my opponent to never get to four mana. Never didn't have it. So this now means that my opponent can't just, like, drop something random like Athalia into play. This does make some of my things like Mox Diamond worse, but it also makes my opponent's Mox and, and whatever worse as well. Uh, rip my humility. I also just immediately take three points of damage from Unlicensed Hearse here as well. Yup. So I am not super live in this game. My opponent doesn't have legendary creatures. I have an ensnaring bridge that I potentially could get a little bit later. So even though this doesn't really do much, I am going to continue to play out these cards. They can matter for smokestacks. They can matter for humility. A quick note here, initiative, as of like yesterday, was 1% or less of the format. Like it's an absolutely tiny part of the format prior to the name sticker goblin ban, and I expect to see a little more initiative, a little more moon stompy floating around in leagues. Uh, Crucible doesn't do anything with hearse in play, and I think at this point I just get punched to death. I can't, uh, so I take three, four, five, maybe six, seven, eight next turn. I could draw Moat, in which case I just die to this still. I think I am going to concede and not show my opponent Crucible. So here is going to be my issue. 
Tyranosaur sucks, Chalice sucks, Void Mirror sucks. I have a very large number of 4-drops that are incredibly slow. My opponent is just much faster than I am. I can reasonably board this in. Don't need to wish for that. This is fine. I think Geddon is fine. Geddon plus um, Tabernacle is good if you look at it sideways. I can do this. Spyglass on Unlicensed Hearse is not crazy. What needs to be in the Karn board? This, 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 this needs to be in the Karn board. Um, that's interesting in the Karn board. I can play an extra Crucible even though it's kind of sketch. I think Trinisphere is the worst of this. Well, I guess Void Mirror is worse. I don't care about my opponent pitch casting with Solitudes or whatever here. What about their artifact mana? I guess Chalice on Zero does the same thing. Chalice on Zero does the same thing, but is free. Okay. This is so slow. All right. I think this is where we're at. Mox Diamond, discard planes, play Ancient Tomb, play Crucible. Have Ensnaring Bridge, Karn Silex. Uh, this is maybe not exactly what I want, but... Early access to Ensnaring Bridge seems perfectly fine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And then any lands that I actually draw, I can use with Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond Crucible of Worlds having some good synergy. Fuck me. All right. So this is tapped, meaning that I can go bam, discard, play before my opponent has priority. I can do this and try to nuke a bunch of my opponent's stuff. That seems okay. Yeah. And yeah. Um, note here that Ancient Tomb is still perfectly usable. This says players can't pay life to cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. So things like fetch lands are off the table. I want to keep my stuff. I think it is just worth doing this for x equals 2. Get rid of this, this, this. Comes at the cost of my white mana, though. Does that matter? Maybe that doesn't matter. Hopefully that doesn't matter. So I destroy a mana source. I will Wasteland to take out another mana source. The Sable of the Mirror Breaker currently can't attack. And that's just enough for my opponent to concede. Uh, we'll take that. That one's not over, but that was a hell of a damaging thing. I guess this counters, uh, who's he, what's it? Um, unlicensed hearse. Is that fine? That is, I guess chalice on the draw kind of does nothing. Um, okay. Well, there's that chalice on the draw. I mean, this, ha this has a clear plan. Keep my opponent off of higher amounts of mana. Crucible my way to victory. Karn for ensnaring bridge. I guess it's a keep, but if my opponent just shoves a three drop on turn one, my hand's really bad. Uh, that's fine. Cool. So, let's do that. My opponent doesn't get artifact mana. And hopefully I just, like, keep wastelanding them off of lands. Uh, this is super cool. I am very glad that my opponent uh, used Chalice of the Void. That is good for me. Like, they physically have more acceleration in the deck than I do. So note that I have colored mana for... <laughs> um, anyway, note that I have colored mana, and my opponent does not. I am going to have to, like you know, actively be thinking about Void Mirror here. So, this is a very important turn cycle for my opponent. If they don't answer this Crucible, I just have Wasteland forever. I have Armageddon forever. Anyway, this deck is unbeatable. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see 
playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. Alrighty, we have a reasonable opening hand here. I am on the play. We'll see if Chalice of the Void on one ends up being relevant at all in this game. The plan is Chalice into Trinisphere is what I was about to say. Now we're going to Wasteland this. Um, our Chalice is on the wrong number. It needs to be on zero for this matchup. Opponent reveals Day's Undoing. So that's most unfortunate. So some portion of the time, even if I Wasteland my opponent, I will just lose my entire hand. So I have to make a called shot here. I can just say, you don't have Ancient Tomb. Like, you don't have the acceleration to immediately cast that. Narset could get, like, a Lotus Petal. Or I could just do something like play Wasteland, play Crucible, and set myself up for the long game. Um, the, the primary problem here, just in case this isn't clear, is that Narset keeps me from drawing more than one card, and Days Undoing makes me draw a bunch of cards. So that's what I am puzzling through. I think I just play Wasteland Crucible here. That gives me a combo in play. I don't care if my opponent makes one Urza Saga token if I am still left with all of this stuff in hand. Yeah. Okay, so we Wasteland the Urza Saga. I play this out. I drop a Void Mirror. It's awkward. I don't have white mana, and the white mana is necessary to make sure that I can do this. JK. So now my opponent gets to dig four deep for whatever it is they need, whether it's a draw seven, artifact mana, whatever. Force of will, sure. I can wasteland this whenever. I don't think I need to do it on their turn. I think I can just wait till my turn. Yeah, fantastic. So I will wasteland this ancient tomb. My opponent can float some mana. Hull Breacher is fine. So now we're gonna go, yeah. We're gonna take a lot of damage. Hope this resolves. My opponent, I believe, did show me a force of will, right? So there it is, pitching a day's undoing. Now I am at a very low life total. My opponent does have a threat in play. Um, so this is not the best. I think this wasteland is more valuable to me than my opponent's scary is to them. I don't have uh, much of an ability to tap Ancient Tomb anymore. You get restoration LED. Okay, yeah, I got it. Oops, all ancient tombs. So I can wasteland this, replay wasteland, but then not really have outs because I will be at one. I can't tap any of these ancient tombs. Just straight up, if I am on the draw and I know that I need to put that chalice on zero, we maybe win this one. So in good news, now that I know how important like chalice, trinosphere, void mirror are, I can mulligan to a proper sort of hand. Armageddon seems reasonable. This is another thing that will shut off Force of Will effects. I might end up playing that. Sorcerer's Spyglass for Narset is fine. Ancient Den as an additional land is fine. So like, what's not good? Tabernacle's not the greatest, but still helps versus Urza Saga tokens. Smokestack is quite slow. This is a very low to the ground matchup. Can still wish for Smokestack. Maybe go down on Humility, but Urza Saga tokens are a thing. Maybe I don't need this. Maybe I need to wish for that. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm just doing the tiniest of sideboard changes here. So this is turn one, Chalice on zero. I can technically make two land drops, but it's not exciting. I have very good cards for the matchup. I don't think I risk this on seven. Uh, this hand is probably good. Just turn one, Chalice on zero. Work towards wastelanding my opponent into Oblivion. I don't think I'm interested in the City of Traitors. Uh, like, it can technically come back with Crucible, but I don't know that I'm trying to power out most things that I can draw. I think I just want consistent land drops. All right, Chalice in play. So this slows my opponent down a lot. It makes my wastelands notably much better. I think I am just going to count on the fact that my deck has more mana in it than my opponent's deck does, and I am going to just go ahead and snap off the Wasteland. Like, it follows up this Chalice relatively well, and I am going to keep making that same decision here. My opponent can keep making their land drops. 
And I will hopefully draw another land that lets me destroy all this stuff. Fantastic. My opponent is discarding. So now I've reached the point where I cannot play any of the cards in my hand due to the high average CMC of my deck, but my opponent is also not playing anything. <laughs> nice. So Crucible is close to game ending. My opponent's had a few draws. I think I am going to take a turn to just cast a Trinisphere, and this is my Force of Will bait, so that next turn I can play Crucible and immediately Crucible Wasteland. Okay, there is a land from my opponent. So this is where we can start seeing like reasonable plays like Narset happen. Okay, there is the Narset. Finding an Echo. So I will go ahead and Crucible. This is an incredibly good counterspell if my opponent has one. Say la vie. I mean, I tried to play around the counterspell to the best of my ability and was foiled. Now my opponent is just going to do the whole draw seven thing. That also, like, clears the graveyard, which is rough. Opponent has a force of will, eight cards in hand. Um, at this point, I probably just lose to that. Like, I'm going to cast this moat. This moat isn't going to resolve. Oh, the moat resolved. Okay, so we're here for a long time, but not a good time. Just mana. Sure. So now we're just going to, like, keep playing out slightly annoying cards. That one got the force. Now my opponent presumably has a couple of bounce spells, a couple of, like, Brazen Borrower type things. All right, my opponent gets a bunch of treasures. And I'm going to do an awful lot of nothing. Uh, it is a Karn. So I'm just going to Lattice. Okay, I don't have the Void Mirror. Um, at this point, I don't get to cast anything. I am comfortable conceding here, assuming that my opponent finds some way to just, like, get around the moat. I'm going to value my time. Okay, my hand's definitely a keep, but I think this is a hand that really exemplifies why I don't like Void Mirror. So, like, let's say I don't have the Chalice of the Void. I have no white mana in this hand, so, like, this would actively be a great card against me. But... It's not going to matter this time because I have things to do with my mana for a few turns. And we'll see whether or not I'm wastelanding my opponent on turn two or just like shoving Crucible. Hmm. Hey. Colorless mana. Voidmir is kind of hilarious here. Um, since my opponent is a partially colorless deck. Like, they almost certainly have green mana in their deck list. But, uh... That might slow my opponent down if their plan is to cast Big Eldrazi. This this is the pause of a, oh, what the fuck? All right, apologies to Voidmere. Armageddon in. Moat in. Trinisphere, probably very bad. Sorceress Spyglass could maybe go on something like Eye of Ugin, Blind, or Elvish Reclaimer if my opponent is in green. I don't mind an ensnaring bridge in the deck. I am considering just bringing in another Crucible because Crucible Wasteland is so good. If I have Karn, I can get a way to destroy lands anyway, so I think I'm into that. Do you do anything here? Activate for X equals 10. Uh, maybe not. Beyond that, like maybe I play something like this to round out the deck. But this is about what I'm looking at. Chalice is not great. Like, I can put it on one for some crop rotation, Elvish Reclaimer, uh, Expedition Map type stuff. Not excited about it. I maybe can just cut a win condition here. Like, I can straight up win with 1 2 2 over time. I think I'm going to cut a win condition. I think my win condition is my opponent conceding most of the time. Maybe I leave that in the board to wish for. Or actually, you know what? My opponent isn't going to make that many creatures most of the time. I might just make that substitution. Um, surely I cannot throw away the hand that has multiple copies of the card Armageddon, right? Like, surely I cannot do that. Ooh, it looks like my opponent might be closer to colorless than I thought. Uh, sure. This is ever so slightly awkward. But I think I just jam. 
The Armageddon doesn't line up the best versus the One Ring. Hopefully that's fine. It's pretty weird to see Cloud Post in these, like Manifold Key, Grim Monolith, the One Ring untappy decks. So I, I guess we'll try to figure out why my opponent is doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Dead. Play another Crucible of Worlds. I think I'll just concede and adjust my sideboarding a tiny bit. So Chalice of the Void on one is good in a way that I didn't necessarily think it was. This is good to wish for. Yeah, I, I just kind of win with a Void Mirror. I'm really bad at pressuring a Karn. This stuff's not great, but it might slow down my opponent. I'm not dealing with Eldrazi immediately. I mean, I, I guess I could still be. Yeah, maybe it's like Eldrazi One Ring Hybrid or something. Maybe my opponent produces too many artifacts and, like, Smokestack is slow. I do this. I do this. That gives me a little more early game. Sorcerer Spyglass can go on a handful of things. Something like this is probably okay. I maybe board the Elspeth in to just have a win condition with a different name. Uh, this doesn't quite work. Mox Diamond, Mox Diamond is 2 mana. I don't get a 3 mana for Crucible. I have stronger hands than this. Yeah, this is just turn 1 Void Mirror. Absolutely. I'm thinking if I need the second Void Mirror. I think it's better than the Chalice. Like, once I do this, my opponent can't really cast stuff. So I guess they can maybe beat me with an Urza Saga, but that's about it. I think this is worth the life. Note that I do have to play that using white mana. Do I have that Crucible in the board? Ah, fuck, the Suva. Uh, anyway, do I have that Crucible in the board? Um, or did I board it in? I boarded it in. Arn for Liquid Metal Coating is still pretty sick. I think that's my line. Minus. Yes. So then I can blow up this Vesuva next turn, or I can blow up all the lands next turn. Just kind of depending on what happens here. Opponent can't activate the One Ring. I can't activate various artifact manas. Okay, sure. Uh, Wasteland is sick. <laughs> okay, they're just done with me. Uh, yeah. Rough matchup for them. Okay, um, opening hand simply does not have enough mana. That one's no good. This one's fine. This one is turn one Trinosphere. I'll probably keep it and get rid of the second Ancient Tomb. I am still going to need a little bit of help from the top of the deck here. Ooh, please, please let me make it to my turn. Good. So, I... <sighs> What does this mean? I, I think I'm getting... Uh, uh, it's, it, it's like white, white for this versus the ability to wasteland after Trinosphering. This might be creature-based combo. Like, this could be some sort of reanimator or show-and-tell deck, in which case, like, the humility is a really big fucking deal. I think I am getting rid of my wasteland here and shoving three ball. And we'll see if I lose the game for this decision or not. This is dazable, like... In tomb into days is a thing that can happen. Oh, it's digging. Or at least using mana um, efficiently before Transphere Tax gets involved. There is the days. So this is potentially Doomsday? That's something that could make sense here. Could still be a reanimator deck of some kind. There's not another land drop. I am just going to shove a Transphere. Because my opponent did not like the last one. They don't like this one either. Uh, we'll try to Trinosphere again next turn. Ooh. Once more with Gusto. Oh, shit. Orcish Bowmasters. Uh, you got it. I wonder if that's a Bowmasters that exists purely to ping other Bowmasters. I'm going to take some damage here. Alternatively, this is draw seven combo. And my opponent wants to put a Bowmasters in play and then draw seven cards. If that's the case, then playing this Humility matters a lot. So it does do this weird thing, though, where this Orc gets bigger. 
Um, the reason being that like the the amassed orc is a zero zero with one plus one plus one counter on it, and so I turn it into a one one with a plus one plus one counter on it. So don't have a lot of time. I think I'm just gonna die. I'm gonna die to one orcish bowmasters. I would like to play moat. Moat wins me the game. I get attacked for three. I am at three. I can tap ancient tomb once. I want to not cast any spells this turn. Um, my Trinisphere is awkward for me here. Yeah, it, it seems like this is a draw seven combo deck. I'm at three. Draw moat. Draw wasteland. I am dead to this. Yep, so we, we just folded to one creature. So my opponent does have counter spells. Void mirror is perfectly fine. Trinisphere is perfectly fine. Paramount's Crypt as artifact or as graveyard hate probably doesn't do what I want it to do. Smokestack is incredibly slow here. I don't think that's realistic, especially when my opponent is playing things like Bowmasters that just produce multiple permanents at the same time. Do I board in Caltrops? I'm not really the biggest fan of my options. I might be keeping Smokestack. Yadin seems mid. I can individually blow up my opponent's lands in a lot of cases. Get an extra land into the deck here. Maybe I'm keeping one of these. Aren't Silex, actually? Play that as something I can draw over Smokestack? Question mark, question mark, question mark. So, my turn one isn't very good. On turn two, I can play Humility or Moat and then the other. And that's fine if I make it to turn two without my opponent doing anything. I think I say no to that. Uh, uh, this is better at keeping me alive. I'm not happy. This is too much mana. I don't know that it's worth going to five, though. I think this is a super reluctant keep. I think I am playing this in the way where I don't need City of Traders. Like, I just get rid of that. I think I put Chalice on one to start, stop the Dark Ritual type acceleration rather than on zero. Opponent forces. Now I am purely living off the top of the deck here. I think my opponent is probably at a large advantage. And well, there's that Dark Ritual I was talking about. And it is a Doomsday pile. Okay, um, my opponent has made their pile past the turn. I don't have a valid play, so they almost certainly kill me and the question is just when like how much time do i have to top deck something like an armageddon do i win more if i show this or if i don't show this that's probably not a surveil land i think i need to show it so at this point i maybe need to just wasteland this land to try to shuffle these last couple of cards oh fuck i don't have an upkeep stop set because i haven't done anything on my opponent's turn throughout the whole league Oops. Yup. Okay, so even if I wasteland, my opponent has another land, they will just kill me later. Yep. I'll concede. I'm going to look at the top card, though. Uh -huh. There was not help coming. Uh, GG's. So assuming that I am willing to just shove here, I can do turn one Crucible, turn two Armageddon. And I think I am just willing to shove. Doesn't matter too, too much which land I discard here. Yeah, it is a bobble, which maybe means some sort... Oh, after we see the second bobble. Ooh, that is unusual. Is this some sort of weird 8-cast style deck? There's got to be more than just Emery if it is that. Um, okay, Armageddon good against Urza Saga confirmed. This is a little weird. There was a red-white Legends deck floating around a while back that played Mox Amber. I want to get some draws. The Wastelanding my opponent is basically the same as casting Armageddon. So I guess I will just play Wasteland. And the Armageddon can't possibly be countered. Get out. And I, I've got Wasteland lock on this game. So my opponent needs to do some serious work with some artifact mana or something. I can kill that in another turn cycle or so. Repeal. Sure. Uh, we are we are facing some sort of oddball deck. Does not feel fair. You know, this feels like a storm adjacent. 
Karn the Great Creator. I can do that next turn. I don't think I need to play Mox Diamond right now. Like Caracas from Graveyard, because my opponent apparently has Legends in their deck. In the next turn, I'll Mox Diamond, discard a Plains, play City of Traders from Graveyard, and then either Karn or Mox Diamond. That's an artifact land that gets shut off by Karn. Uh, it is indestructible for Armageddon purposes, which is kind of cute. Uh, sure. Like, are you just gonna fucking frog bite me? Are you an experimental synthesizer deck? It's a fun, it's a fun problem to solve. Force of Will on Mox Diamond. This will just come down in another turn. Oh uh, yeah, play Wasteland from Yard, call it a turn. The basic land. Paradoxical outcome, maybe? Uh, one ring is totally fine, as I am about to Karn. Sure. Uh, yeah, so let's Karn. Opponent Force of Will to Mox last turn. So my Karn resolves, and now uh, we can just start plus and Karn, I guess. I don't think what I do here matters too much. Like, I think I am just going to follow this up with an Armageddon, and my opponent will concede. Um, note here that this land is indestructible. We've got our win condition in play. <laughs> we got that going for us. But, uh, the ETB tapped land that also doesn't produce mana is just chef's kiss right now. Opponent it does not have enough mana to repeal the Karn, and we'll probably never get to that much mana. Uh, yeah, no, we just won. So, artifact-based combo deck list with blue card draw and protection could be transmute artifact as well in there. Void mirror probably good. Trinisphere's and chalices probably good. Might have Urza's Saga to deal with, so like the Armageddon and Moat type stuff become more interesting. I guess what do I want out of the sideboard? Silex is kind of interesting versus Force of Will. I might want to just leave that as a tutor target. Until I know a little bit more about my opponent's deck, like whether or not like Synthesizer is a part of this or whether or not it's like Transmute Artifact nonsense, until I know a little more, yeah, it's slightly tough for me to make just like perfectly informed decisions. I'm going to assume that I can just cut win conditions. I don't think I've ever actually killed anyone today. I think everyone has just conceded once I did my thing. Like, let's assume that I can cut some of this stuff. Like, just play another Armageddon, play another moat for Synthesizer. I think I'm going to bring in Bridge, just assuming that Synthesizer is a thing. Spyglass for the One Ring is very reasonable. Naturally boarding in Crucible is pretty reasonable. I might just want to be able to wish for this, though. I, I think I like hedging against Synthesizer like this. Uh, turn 2 Ensnaring Bridge, turn 3 Armageddon is okay. I think it's only okay. I don't have a way to get those lands back. Flagstones kind of gets me a land. I think I'm just going to mulligan this, though. This does not have any colored mana. I have Chalice on 0 into Crucible. Karn's okay. This one might be good enough. I just, like, hope to spike another mana source. I get rid of my white card that I can't cast. If I play a Chalice and it gets countered, I just play another. Well, it's got basics this time. And a lot of artifacts. Let's see how many they cycle immediately. It might just be all of them. Metalcraft count matters, though. It is all of them. Sure. So three redraws. And then I attempt to start the Reign of Terror of Chalice of the Void. Feels like it's about to get countered. It is. Pitching a repeal. So I think my opponent was thinking about whether or not they would rather just bounce it out of play. And the answer was no, they would not. So unfortunately for them, I do just have another Chalice of the Void. And that one sticks. So all these zero-cost artifacts that my opponent has in their deck are now stuck in their hand. Uh, my kingdom for a wasteland, please. Uh, that's fine. Humility's not quite castable yet. I'm thinking about whether or not I want to shove Crucible this world, this turn, or attack for two. I think while my opponent hasn't had much time to get another counterspell, I'm just going to put Crucible into play. Uh, this is a very powerful effect. Like, having this in play powers up Armageddon if I were to top deck one. 
There's also no guarantee that my opponent just has the third land. They do this time. Sure. So two mana. Yeah. How big is this Urza Saga token? Two, two, three, three, four, four. Could be like five. I probably just Karn plus this turn. Uh, like so. Uh, this does shut off Darksteel Citadel, so my opponent's actually only getting one token. So it could be attacking for four with like Lava Spur Boots or something. Uh, we'll plus on their land, folks. How about that? We'll plus on their land. Delicious. So we are turning it into a 0-0 zero, zero creature, so it is still dying. I guess uh, we're not destroying it. If I misspoke earlier about that interaction, I apologize. Or was it Liquid Metal Coating that I was thinking of earlier? Might have been Liquid Metal Coating. I don't know. Uh, Pithing Needle on Karn is perfectly fine and good. The Karn sitting there and shutting off all of the artifact abilities is maybe just good enough while I have a Mishra's Factory in play. Sure. Karn's loyalty goes down. Life is still perfectly fine. Now let's just work towards playing Humility next turn. I would love it if my opponent did not play a pre-combat artifact. That's annoying. So... I block with this. I play City of Traders from Graveyard. I play Humility. And this is a lot less scary. I don't think it matters if I lose this as a chump blocker. Then I don't have to commit mana to this next Karn. Alright, get bigger. I just don't think I need to open up mana for my opponent right now. So City from Yard into Humility. So this is now a 1-1. One, one. Hmm, if I plus... Karn on artifact lands. How does that work? I guess it doesn't matter because Karn is pithing needled. But, you know, worth thinking about. Now we go bam. Play out Mishra's factory. Call it a turn. And Mishra's factory is going to win the war against a 1 1 token. Fantastic. A new Crucible of Worlds. I think it's fine to just play another Crucible. My opponent is a fan of my deck. So that's just getting countered here. And we just kind of stay in this stalemate. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep making land drops, call it a turn. And eventually we're going to, like, I don't know. Assemble Humility plus Moat. My opponent can't really win from there. They deck before I do. That, like, legitimately could be the way that I win this one. Did I board the Elspeth out? Did board the Elspeth out. That makes it a little harder. But, like, Tabernacle getting rid of this slightly longer term is good. Why do I even put this Chalice on? My opponent says I'm not even sure if they have an out. I don't know what the Chalice is supposed to go on. I don't know enough about my opponent's deck. I think I'm just going to pass the turn. Eventually, I'll find a second Mishra's Factory, and I can, like, attack and block, or I find some way to kill this Construct token. Okay, we indeed have gotten the concession from our opponent, meaning that we have a 3-2 in this league. Honestly, that was a really good league, and it went pretty quickly as well. I, I think the core of this deck is pretty solid, or at least it's pretty solid knowing that you are playing stacks in Legacy, which is fighting an uphill battle. Like, we did just embarrassingly lose a game to one Orcish Bowmasters, which just soloed us. And, like, that sort of thing is going to happen sometimes when you play decks that look like this. Voidmere did stuff. Voidmere did stuff. I don't necessarily think that it is a good card, but, like, it earned its spot in the deck. In the, in, in the deck in this league. I don't know that I have major changes that I would suggest. Um, I boarded out Smokestack in every single round, and I think I was probably correct to do so, or if not every round, very close to it. Um, this is just an incredibly slow card. Like It's a four mana card, which does nothing the turn that it comes into play. And I was just like finding other ways to put the squeeze on my opponent with like Karn or Crucible, Transfer, Chalice, Voidmere. Um, like, maybe you need this for some matchups. Maybe this can just be a Karn Wish target. Even then, I don't necessarily see myself wishing for it much. Like, wishing for this is slower than just playing it in the first place.
Despite the fact that basically our entire sideboard is a Karn wish board, I was able to board out the worst of the stuff in a lot of the matches that I played. So that wasn't as awkward as I was maybe expecting. So Sean, I, I, th I think you, you ultimately get the thumbs up here. I think Void Mirror is a little sus. I think Smokestack is a little sus. But otherwise, I think most of the deck building here is, is pretty solid. And I think that's what I've got. Folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. And should you need any paper magic cards, toamagic.com, promo code THRAVENU, save yourself a little bit of money. All right, see ya!